it's about 11.29, and so uh, we're going to get started right at 11.30, and uh, welcome to Drop Everything and Learn. My name is Sherry Kennedy. I am the Digital Learning Specialist for Crowley's Ridge Co-op in Northeast. Uh, today's topic is going to be how to use Nearpod, and our presenter is going to be Stephen Walker. He is also a digital learning specialist. So, Stephen, we got about a minute, and I'm going to go ahead and make you host, and we'll get started. All right. So, good morning. Um, can everybody hear me okay? Okay. I'm helping at an event for North Central Co-op today, so I'm over in an auditorium. Um, so, I wasn't sure if there'd be an echo or how it would sound. So I thought we'd do a quick audio check just to be sure. Um, the other option I had was to be in the same room with about 50 K through six kids running around. So thought this was the better option. I put a link in the chat box. Um, if you'll click it, um, you can join in. I know we only have about 30 minutes, so it'll be hard to cover everything in Nearpod, but I do want you guys to, to kind of get a, a feel of what the of what this what it would be like using it on the students end that way you can kind of have an idea of of, of how things would um, go if you used it in the classroom and i'll give you guys just a minute to join in um, even if i get started with the nearpod lesson and and you're still trying to join in it will bring you in to wherever we're at so you won't completely miss out um, also, when you get into the Nearpod lesson in the top right hand corner, or may kind of to the side a little bit more, um, there'll be a pencil icon with a little notebook looking pad. And if you click it, you, it'll give, it'll ask you if you want to put um, your Google Drive in or your email address or um, OneDrive, maybe the third option. And basically, this will be a way that you can get a copy of all the slides that we go over today. Um, if you take notes, in the bottom, after you put your email address in, in the, on the, at the bottom of the screen, you'll see a spot to where you can type notes in. Um, it will also give you a copy of those notes that you put in. So instead of having to take pictures of your screen or whatever, um, you can just type in notes and then it'll email you whenever we close out of Nearpod at the end. Um, if you ever use it in the classroom, same thing with your students. Um, also, if you have a school district that's looking to purchase Nearpod, usually it ranges around seven to eight dollars a user. So that'll give you a, I'd estimate about eight dollars a user, and that'll give you a rough estimate of of what it would cost your school district to purchase Nearpod. Um, the larger the school, the the lower the license will be, or the per user license will be. But I don't know of any schools that have gone below six dollars. All right, so hopefully we're all in the Nearpod lesson now. It looks like we've got nine in. And if somebody needs us to put the link back in the chat box, just let us know. And somebody in the room will do a copy and paste it back in there. But just let us know. Um, that way you can just click the link and just join in. Or if you're using a second device for Nearpod, let us know and we'll put the direct code in. If you just that way, you can just type the um, five five character code. All right, so right now you should see a screen that says "Keep students engaged in learning wherever they are," and I see the chat where they want the direct code. Let me grab that real quick. Steven, are you going to share your screen with us when you get going? Well, I was planning on them following along in Nearpod and then with the last 10 minutes or so, share my screen and show what it would look like on the teacher's end. But okay. I wanted to give them a, just a feel of what it would be like using the students end. I know in Zoom, it's hard to follow Nearpod and a screen share at the same time. So I was trying to kind of section those two off. Um, in the chat box, if you need the direct code for a second device, um, just go to join.nearpod.com and then type the code in that's underneath it. You should see it in the chat box. 
All right, so in Nearpod, I'm going to go ahead and advance it to the next slide. Um, this training today, again, it's about 30 minutes long. I usually like to have an hour and a half. So we are, we are about to cram in a lot of material here. So just be ready. Um, so the first screen that you're going to be able to kind of um, get a feel for is the collaboration board. And while, um, do you guys see the collaboration board? It's working on it for me. Yes, Stephen, we see it. But it's not letting you put a response in yet? It is letting us put a response. Okay, okay. So while you guys type a response into the collaboration board, um, I'm going to talk a little bit more about Nearpod. Um, so the way Nearpod works is you can use PowerPoint or Google Slides or just the built-in tools in Nearpod to build out a, a good presentation. But the cool thing about Nearpod is it takes those slides and lets you build in interactive tools to really engage the students. Um, I haven't really got to my favorite feature yet, but there's this um, feature called Draw It. Um, that is great, especially if you teach math, which I'll talk a little bit more about Draw It whenever we get to that section. Um, but on the collaboration board, this is a great way to start off your class discussions, uh, whatever you, you can think of. Um, since we're low on time, I'm going to skip the second collaboration board and just combine it with this one. Um, after you post your 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 response to whatever it is, and I don't care if you make it up, you don't even have to answer this question, but also add an image to the response. So if you've already typed a response out, just do a second one and add an image to it. And the way you would do an image is where you see the text box over to the right hand side of it, you'll see a little picture icon and maybe the word GIF to it next. Um, if you click that, picture icon, it's going to ask if you would rather search your computer for the picture. So if I have a picture that was downloaded or maybe I created it, my, the students created this picture in class, um, they could upload it directly from their device. Or if we want to keep it simple, they can just use the enhanced by Google search bar. Just type something random in um, to that search bar, click the magnifying glass. It'll give you a bunch of pictures to choose from. Just choose something and throw it in the collaboration board. It don't have to be anything on topic. I just want you guys to kind of see um, how you do have two different options there. So we, if you want to really give your students the flex, if you trust your students and you want to give them the flexibility to be able to add pictures or, or, or so, uh, just so you guys kind of see what it would look like. Now, are you guys seeing the responses pop up on your screen yet? Okay, so in on my, since I have the teacher side of it, uh, and I'll come back to it if we have time to where I can show it. I actually have a slider to where it's enabled to where it's by default now. Used to it gave you a pop up and it would ask you, but by default it's asking, um, it'll have it, it's turned on to where you have to approve student responses before they pop up. If you don't trust your class, I would leave the default it would it on by default. If you trust your class, then you can turn it off to where it will automatically pop up. Um, but I'll just go ahead and approve these. I'm not going to read them, so hopefully everybody in here kept it PG at least. Let me approve, there's a approve all post button. Um, so anyway, so now you should see the collaboration response or the responses for the collaboration board popping up on your screen. This is again, this is a great way to start a class discussion. Maybe we're in a Zoom session like we are now. Um, you could have your students look at them. Um, you can also now have them, this is new. You can now have them write a comment um, I also, on the teacher side, I have an option to delete the response if I want to remove it. So even if I accidentally approve one or somehow it slips by, I can go back and delete it. So it's not once and, and you're stuck with it, um, which is good because I do miss things. Uh, but anyway, so now you can have your students actually write a comment. Um, I, um, on, you should, do you guys see the comment box on your end? 
Okay, so you'll be able to write a comment and have your students actually discuss things inside of the collaboration board, or you can just do it verbal in the classroom, whichever um, option is better for you. So I'm going to approve one that came in late and we'll continue on. So this is really built around a lesson that is built into Nearpod. What is static electricity? Um, earlier when I said the pricing was about seven, eight dollars a user, it really includes some extra features like student pace mode and the pre-built lessons by Nearpod. Nearpod has tried to pre-build lessons that are aligned to all K through 12 core curriculum classes. So if you if your school purchases Nearpod, you will have access to the pre-made content. Um, if you teach a core subject area, that way you're not having to create all these lessons from scratch. Um, you can use theirs and then modify their lesson. You can add your own, you can delete whatever they have, um, full customization over their lessons if your school purchases it. If you use the free version, student live mode, which is what we're in right now, um, still works great. So you can still use most of the Nearpod tools, all the good Nearpod tools you can still use for free. So whenever earlier when I said there was pricing, um, don't think ah, I'm done with Nearpod because we can't, we're not going to be able to purchase it. Um, I would use the free version if that was my only option. The free version works great. And the two, my two favorite tools, which I'll show you guys here in a minute, is included in the free version. So on this screen that you should see right now is uh, it's another collaboration board. We've already went through that. Um, the screen that you see now is actually a, a virtual um, field trip that is built into Nearpod that we have where we're talking about electricity. Well, there's a lightning storm going on. So on your screen, you should be, if you're using a laptop or desktop that is not a touch screen, then you can use your mouse to click and drag around, look around on the screen. You can also zoom in and out. If you're using a iPad or a, a touch screen device, um, you can pinch to zoom and whatever it is to zoom out. You guys know how all that works now. Um, but anyway, so you can look around on the picture. This is a great way to for kids to kind of see um, what you're talking about. Instead of kind of looking at a picture, it allows them to kind of get um, that interactive piece to where they can look around the image instead of just looking at a plain image. So it does give them a little bit more of a different look. I'll give you guys just a second to click around. Now, if you have headsets in your classroom, you can put this in goggle mode or whatever they call it to where it'll, it'll modify it for the lenses. Um, if you have an iPad, or an iPhone or a, a something like that, Android device. Um, on a laptop, desktop, I don't think you can do it, but if you have a phone or an iPad, you can put it in goggle mode to where you can slide it into one of those virtual headsets and then they can wear it and actually look around instead of having to click on their screen. So it is pretty neat what you can do with the virtual field trips to make the kids feel like they're actually there experiencing the lesson. And if you know how to create your own, I think you can even build that in there. Um, I don't know how to create my own. I'm not that fancy. This one here is an audio um, where you know, on any slide, I don't, it don't, if on any Nearpod slide that you have, you can add an audio clip to it um, at the bottom. So if you're going to put this in student pace for the students to review later, or you're going to have them work in stations and they have headphones, um, it's not a bad idea to build a little audio clip instead of you having to go around the room and repeat yourself 30 times. Um, they can just click the audio deal to remember what is it we're working on, um, but you will have that option. If you're fancy and you like to create your own audio clips using that high dollar software, you can import audio. But if you're like me and you just like to shoot audio on the fly, Nearpod has it to where you can use their audio deal and do a quick recording. So you do have two different options. Um, and I'm going to, right now you can't click play because there's a pop-up box on my screen that is asking me, um, would you, where would you like this audio clip to be played? My choice is all devices or this device only. If I'm in the classroom, I'm choosing this device only. Um, when we're all on site doing PD, I like to give everybody the option to click play so they can experience what it would be like if 30 kids in the classroom without headsets all hit play at the same time. Um, you don't want that to happen. 
So I am glad Nearpod gives us that option. Now, if you're in a Zoom session, um, I would give everybody the option to click play. Just make sure that their microphone's muted. But in this case here, I'm going to allow all devices to click play. So now you guys should see the play button at the bottom of the screen. Go ahead and I think it's four or five seconds long, maybe nine, but either way, it's not very long. So go ahead and click play and I'll wait about 10 seconds for you guys to listen to this creepy voice explain neutrons and electrons to you. All right, so now that we all understand electrons and neutrons and protons now, um, I don't know about you guys, I just uh, it just sounded creepy to me when I listened to it for the first time, but that may just be me. Uh, I, it, I, I would have it more natural if I was going to do a recording for my kids. Uh, otherwise, they'll be more focused on how you recorded it other than the material that's trying to be taught. Uh, or at least I was that kind of kid, maybe the ones we have these days are better. And it's the exact same way with videos. Um, videos, you have that same option. If you want to, if you want everybody to play the audio or if they, or for them to watch your screen. So again, if I'm in the classroom or even if I'm in a Zoom where I'm sharing my screen, um, then I can have it to where they, they have to watch my screen. They cannot all click play at the same time on the video. Um, it works the same way. The screen that you see now is a simulator that is built in. I don't know if you guys have ever used, I think it's a free resource too, but I don't think, I don't know if you guys have ever used PHET. Um, there, you can go to the website. I forget if Sherry or somebody uh, might be able to find the direct website to PHET if you don't want to use Nearpod. Um, you can still use their little simulations, throw it in a link in Google Classroom or something. Um, it has a bunch of the science simulators and you can kind of look with this balloon where if you click the balloon and rub it against a sweater, um, it'll pull some of those. Um... I've got my but it'll pull some of those neutrons over to it. And then when you let go of the balloon and you can kind of see how the sweater attracts it by, by the positive pulling it, pulling the negatives together. So they kids can actually kind of see how that would work all built into that, um, all built into the program. Much easier for the kids to use this simulator than you trying to explain it. Unless you want to pull out a real balloon and a real sweater, then that probably be better. But if you want to keep it easy, but there's all kinds of simulators um, that are built in. And since PHET is free, and there's probably a more technical term than PHET, um, I don't know what it is. But I, I believe even with even with the free version of Nearpod, I still think you have access to these tools um, since it's free and it didn't cost Nearpod any. They just kind of partnered up together and brought it into Nearpod. All right, I'm gonna continue. I know we're going quick, but there's a lot to cover and not any time. So this time, this is a video. Um, this time I'm going to choose this device only. Well, let me think. Yeah, we're, we're going to do this device only. So this is what it would look like if I did not give you guys the option to click play. It's going to force you to see my screen. Um, basically, it's just a vocabulary deal. I don't know if you guys have ever seen vocabulary videos. It's basically where they rap, not rap, hip hop. They use hip hop music to explain vocabulary. Um, when I do a screen share, I'll try to come back to that if we have time um, to, and then show you kind of on the teacher's end. I'll quickly show the vocabulary lesson while we do a screen share. Um, I don't want to make you guys jump it back and forth real quick, but I do want to quickly get to this one here. This is the draw it that I was telling you guys earlier that I there is two tools in Nearpod that is the reason I, I the reason I recommend Nearpod to people is because of the tool you're looking at right now. 
So long, ver long story short, I walked into a classroom one time um, back when I was trying to figure out how do we use um, math, how do we use Chromebooks in a math classroom? And it don't matter if it's touchscreen, Chromebooks, iPads, whatever, but how do we use technology in a math classroom? Because if you're like me, you do not like typing special symbols into a keyboard. And when you're in a high school math class, that is all you're doing. So a keyboard is basically irrelevant in a high school math classroom unless you know all the special keys. So I, for years, I was trying to find something that students could use that would be easy in the classroom for math teachers. And anyway, I walked into this math classroom one day and they were using Nearpod. They were using this draw it feature and using touchscreen Chromebooks. So the teacher would pop up a math problem onto the Chromebooks and the students would use their fingers to solve it. The really cool part is the, the teacher was able to see real time what the kids were doing. And then whenever they submitted their work in, um, the teacher could choose one of the student responses and share it back to all of the Chromebooks so they could all look at the same one and, and, and start a classroom discussion about why, what did they miss um, when they were working the problem out? Or what did they do to get a perfect score on a, with a, of, of a perfect four um, on the benchmark or whatever we use now? We're always changing it. I can't keep up. Uh, but anyway, whatever that perfect score is, we can discuss that in the classroom. And they're using Chromebooks um, while they're working these out. Stephen, you have a question. <clears throat> Kelsey said, so the teacher can see what the students are doing, but other students can't? They cannot unless I share it to them, which if you guys will quickly draw and add a text box and submit, submit your draw, drawing to me, then I will share one back so you guys see what it looks like if I do share a student response. Now I'll give you guys one minute. And on my screen, and again, I'll try to come back to this. I'm 11.55, we're going to do the screen share and, and then try to quickly show you what it would look like. Um, I hope I can touch all the Nearpod tools before then, but it's a tight fit. All right, so I know most of you guys are still working. Um, so I'm going to just choose one. We'll choose one. I don't know if these are puppy dog ears or what, but this will be a good one to discuss. So on your screen, you should see the student response that I've shared to everybody. Um, you should see a smiley face with long ears. I'm not sure what we were drawing there, but we won't we won't call out the person that did it, even though I do see their screen, their name. But anyway, we'll leave it at that. Um, so the cool thing is on your screen, you do not see the name. This is the other part I liked about Draw It. It, start, it allows us to have that class discussion about what went wrong here or what, what they did that was perfect without calling the student out. So the alternative to this would be to have the student come up in front of the class on the whiteboard and do their work. Well, everybody knows who, who that student is because they're watching them work it out. In Nearpod, they do not, unless that student goes, all right, that's mine. Um, nobody in the room is going to have an idea who that is. And even if they know what their writing looks like on paper, um, writing on a, on a touchscreen device is completely different. So it's going to be really hard for the students to identify who's who. And any tool you use in Nearpod can be anonymous. It don't just have to be draw it. Um, we even figured out that in the time to climb game, which we have not discussed yet, can also be um, uh, anonymous. It took me a year to figure that out. That's why I pointed it, wanted to um, talk about that one for a second. So I'm going to unshare it. And when I do unshare it, I can, I can pick another response and share it or, or whatever, but you guys pretty much get the idea. So the second 
favorite tool that I have is more for reading um, teachers, English, stuff like that. Um, so on your screen, you should see a lot of gibberish or a lot of text, whatever you want to call it. Um, it looks, you guys are going to be thinking there's no possible way that he can make this look like the second best tool in Nearpod. Um, but I can. In the top right hand corner, right above the question mark, it may be over the question mark, it's in, depending on your screen size, you should see a little book with an audio icon. Click that and it's going to enable immersive, Microsoft Immersive Reader. And it's going, and you're going to see a play button at the bottom. If you click the play button, it will automatically start reading the text to you. Um, to the right of the play button is a little, um, what is it, gear? Let me minimize Zoom. Um, a gear icon with a little audio clip that's going to allow you to change it from female to male voice. Um, you can adjust the speed of it, but that's just the start of all this. Um, the in the top right hand corner, you're going to see three icons. Um, start with the double A for text preference. And this is and whenever you make an adjustment, it's only to you. So students cannot mess with other people's screens. They can only change the look of their own screen. So I can change the text size. Um, I can increase spacing, which um, depending on the student might be a big deal. I do like to turn my off, mine off because I think it puts too much spacing in there. But some students will like that. Um, they can change the font. They can also change the theme, which the theme will change the, the look of the text. So I could have one with a green background instead of it being white or a blue background. So if you have a lot of reading in class, you know students like to customize things. So this just gives a student, the students a different look if they want it. Um, nothing big. I, to this day, I have no idea what shell source formatting is. I'm still waiting for somebody to say this is what it does. Um, I've, I've clicked it, nothing happens. Um, the next option is grammar options with the, little, the, with the lines with the little wand. Um, this is the part I really like. So I can enable the syllabus slider and it's going to break every word into syllables. So if you're teaching syllable or um, if you're teaching syllables in class, this is a great tool to use. So the students can automatically break them into syllables and see how that works, and, and then be able to sound it out and see why um, stories is two syllables instead of one. Same thing with nouns, verbs, adjectives, adverbs. I can enable all those, allow it to highlight what's what. Um, I can also do show labels if I plan on clicking off of the, the little uh, little deal on the right or the menu, the menu deal on the right, and then it still shows me what is what. Now, it may not be 100% accurate, but it'll be enough for you to kind of have an idea of how all that works. Um, I'm going to show you one more thing with Microsoft Immersive Reader. So click the little book icon. You can do line focus. And for people that have trouble reading line by line, by line um, can enable this and it's going to put a dark text box around it. And then they can use, use their keyboard to go up and down or whatever as they're reading without, and then it automatically moves them to the next line. Um, the part I wish I had more time to talk about is translate. Um, it's really cool because you can translate your text to pretty much any language you want to. And then there's a lot of features I don't have time to really talk about, but Translate is the coolest part of, micro, of Microsoft um, Immersive Reader. So if you got somebody that ch um, speaks Chinese that has trouble reading English, I can pop all this text into Nearpod and then allow them to ch choose um, Chinese and it'll even read it to them in that language. So it's pretty cool. But I'm going to share my screen because I want you guys to see a few things um, in the teacher's end, and then we'll have a few minutes for Q&A, and I do apologize that I wasn't able to hit the games like Time to Climb, which is similar to Kahoot, um, but there are so many different um, options there. So I am sharing my screen. The, my, the teacher mode of Microsoft Immersive Reader looks just like what you guys saw because there is nothing additional to um, the teacher end. The students have full control over Microsoft Immersive Reader's why. Um, so let's say we were at, we were doing a group work activity 
or or I get to the end of the lesson, I've got slides at the end that I want the students to be able to work at work on at their own pace. I can enable student pace mode now. Used to, you had to choose one or the other and it wasn't easy to do go back and forth, but now you can click a simple button. And whenever I click student paste, um, and it'll let me select wherever they need to start at, but I'm not going to enable it, but on your end, it would give you arrows like what you see on my screen to where you can advance your own slides. I don't have to do it for you. Um, that's what student paste mode is. Um, hide student names. If I was sharing my screen on a projector, I can click hide student names and they would not be able to see student names even though they see my screen. Um, I'll go ahead and leave that one enabled since I'm going to show you guys some stuff here in a minute. I can also quickly jump between slides, but I think we're down to two minutes. So I'm going to go back. This is what it looked like on the teacher end of Draw It. So I am able to see, and remember I've got student names hidden so you guys can't see who drew the, the face with the weird ears. Um, so it's just going to show stars, so sorry there. Uh, but anyway, I can quick, I am able to watch real time as people are doing their work. And it also high, or lights up green whenever they submit their work. You can only share student responses after they're submitted. So like the one in progress, I can't share. But if I click one that's green, then I can click the red share button and it sends it to all of the student screens for them to view. So that's why I really like um, the draw. Draw it's by far my favorite one because of math. The flow vocabulary lesson. This is the pop up that you would see if you were doing audio clips. Um, all devices, if you want everybody in the room to be able to pl click play and listen to it. Or if you want them to be focused on your screen, we do this device, is, this device only. But uh, I'm going to do this device only. And I don't know why that advanced on me. So anyway, that is a quick version of vocabulary of what it would look like if you used it. Um, the other, the last deal I want to show you guys is wherever my collaboration board went. Let's just jump to it. It's this one here. So this is the collaboration board you guys were working on. Maybe today it'll load for me. There it goes. So this is what it looks like. I have the trash can icon. I can see everybody. Um, if I wanted to, I could have had you guys click the heart and vote on them. Um, I'll also be able to uh, delete comments that you guys are, like if the student typed a comment in that was vulgar or mean, I could delete it too. Um, but anyway, you see the approve all post button up here. So if I have it in that mode to where people can't, or students where I have to approve them all and they all look fine, then I can just click approve all post and then all of these pop up on your screen. Um, you can kind of see an example here, approve all comments. So somebody wrote a comment. Um, so right now you wouldn't see it on your screen, but as soon as I click approve all comments, um, it added that comment into it. So you do have full control. The last thing is student options up here in the top left-hand corner. If I click it, I have options to where students can see the names. So if I didn't want you guys to see who was um, cussing you out in the comment box, then I could turn that off and it would keep the name anonymous. Um, probably would like, might not be a bad idea to keep that on so they don't do that. Um, you can still see the names even if this is on or off. This does not apply to you, just the students. Um, underneath it, students can edit responses. Completely your call if you want to allow that or not. Um, approve student responses. If you have a GT class or just a class in general that you trust, um, you can turn that off and you're not having to click approve all comments or approve all posts every time something's posted. Um, it just automatically ends up on it. Um, same thing with student comments. Um, so we're out of time. I hate it too, because there was about another hour I needed to show. Um, but anyway, I do have a few minutes to answer questions or whatever before I have to run back into the, the room and help get these wild people under control.
Stephen, I have a quick question that says yeah. when, when the screen transitioned to the language part, I lost my notes when the screen came back. Are they somewhere? It well, it'll it's, the notes will be on each slide. So whenever you close out later, whenever we close out of Nearpod, you will get an email or whatever it is you, you wanted it to send to. Uh, let's just say you typed in your email address, you will get an email and underneath that slide will be the comment that you put in for it. So every time we advance slides, it gives you a new comment box. Thank you. Yeah. And there is days we do the full Nearpod training too. So let us know if you're interested in a full Nearpod training that lasts about hour and a half, hour, hour and a half, somewhere in there. And we can go into a lot more detail. But if there's a lot of interest, that's something we can always put together. And I appreciate you guys attending today too. Hopefully it was worth it, even though it was super quick. Good job, Stephen. I just want to remind everybody that deal days for next month is going to be on April the 21st, and it's going to be dipping our toes in the podcast pool, and we're going to have podcast expert David Henderson along with uh, podcast novice Kirsten Wilson, and uh, they're going to be sharing some things with us about podcast, and Robin has put in the chat a link to where we're going to house today's recording. So if you have another educator within your building who you think would benefit from today's uh, deal day, uh, please share that with them. And we also uh, share it on our YouTube channel as well. And uh, we also have the other recordings housed uh, there as well. So if you've missed a prior deal day, you can rewatch it there. And we thank you so much. And thanks for all the positive comments. Uh, Karen said, Stephen, this is a great teaching tool I, that I've seen in a while. And Christina says, this was great. And uh, everybody else says, thank you. So thank you for attending today. Uh, thanks everybody kirsten are you still on here i don't know if kirsten's still on here do you have something uh it seems like there was something that um the 2022 study tours do you have something you want to chime in on that i'd be happy to um this is through o uh, office of innovation of education uh their study tours are coming up um, and you can attend these free virtual tours um, it's also through the commissioner um, memo and you can find it um, uh, promoted on desi social media um, there's a qr code there as well if you'd like to register for those study tours and uh, some great things happening um, that are highlighted at hugh goodwin elementary and horatio high school thank you Thanks, everybody, for attending. We appreciate it.